Hi and welcome back to a brand new tutorial. Here we're going to look at how to master a track. But before I start, don't forget to subscribe to my channel, hit the notification bell, very important. Okay, a few people have been asking me for this. We're going to do this with only stock plugins. So what I've done here is I've imported a track that I got from Future Music Magazine a couple of years back. It was a mastering cd that came with it and i was talking about about five six years ago and uh they had this uh guy uh, from a really really good uh mastering studio in the uk explain how he mastered a track so i looked at it and downloaded these files and you could master the unmastered file up against the mastered file which is really sounds good the master file i mean very good so it's a bit of a challenge and i did that back then and learned a lot from that that video um i'd learned a lot about mastering before a few years back in the early 2000s with a top engineer so i was lucky to be on a session where i was learning engineering and a lot of stuff that i was missing and and mastering as well but this kind of completed it a bit so these are stock plugins and here if i just go like this and turn them all off for now and we can listen to the original here. I hope I can play this. Um, I'll keep it short, not to get striked by future music or someone. So anyway, let's just listen to this. So just find a, past, a place where there's vocals and quiet. Okay, so if we, I've got a multimeter up. And what I like to do is to look at the frequencies and the loudness uh we have all this in one here we have the loudness here as well but i kind of like to look at it so. now this is not as loud as the, the latest kind of edm stuff uh you, they really push it up to about five rms this is averaging between eight five and nine in rms so now Let's get stuck in and see how we can try and get the unmastered version, which is this. So as you can see, we've got 3.4 and up here 3.4 or 6, 3.6 left on the left hand side with of headroom, which is perfect. And uh, that's that's good headroom to start with. So Let's jump in. This is going to be interesting to see if I can get this sounding as good as this. Probably not as good, but if we can get it close, that's pretty good because this is done in a really, really good mastering studio with top-notch gear and top-notch speakers. And here we're doing this with stock plugins. So <laughs> it's going to be fun. So I'm going to start off with a bus compressor. Like this is the SSL equivalent of the bus compressor which comes in Logic. Now what I've done here is just done a bit of compression, a slow attack and a fast release and just no makeup on this, 0.5, just to bring it to sort of the same level, but give it a little bit of punch. So it's still around the same, just a little bit more here. Let's just give it a little bit of punch there, right? Take that off. Sort of brings it out nicely just to do a bit of heavy lifting with several compressors but i do this because i'm imagining he hasn't put anything on the uh, stereo bus and so sometimes people put this on the stereo bus uh, before sending it so what i do is i do that as well on my mixes and then i don't put it in the mastering but if i feel it might need it i put it in the mastering and then i take it off and see what it sounds like without it but this kind of sounds okay with it and then I've got to put the chain on so this will just automatically close when I open this one up, up, open that. And I've got this vintage console on and I've added a bit of top here and I've added a little bit of middle around the 1.2 and I've added a little bit of low here at 49.50 hertz. So I haven't used the cutoff here because I'm going to use that in the next one. So let's have a listen to this. So that's nice. Now let's turn on the 
this EQ. Now what I've done here is carved out some nasty frequencies that when you push them up they make a ringing sound. So what I do is I sweep the frequencies across and get out some ringing frequencies, harmonics that get in the way and then I pull them out. And what I've done here is like a sort of a dip at 225 and then a boost around here. Uh, see, this kind of boosts here, but it's actually kind of making a nice curve and a, and a slope at 40, which gives me quite a bit of a punch in the bass. So that's sounding cool. Uh, now let's move down to the spread here. So what I've done here with this plugin is basically let's put the chain back on that and that so that will cut off now so this basically of what i've done here is i've just i've got i've got the spread coming from about 360 upwards not to sort of like spread out the base end and uh, i've just put it up to about 46 percent so it gives me a bit of a So that spreads it out a bit. Then what I've got now is another compressor, more like a compressor that's just going to control some levels here at the end. Just hitting it a little bit. I didn't use the uh, multiband compressor because it didn't bring anything to the track, uh, so I left that out on purpose. Um, sometimes I use it, depends on the track really, but this time I didn't feel that it needed it. Still got a, a bit of a margin here, and then we're gonna slap on the uh, the limiter at the end and uh, see if we can get it sounding anything we're near as good as this. So let's bring up the limiter. Now I've got a gain of 5.9 here, I checked out on the ceiling. I'm gonna do the same as them as minus 0.5. You can go in here between minus 0.7 and minus, minus 0.3 because when this when you export to a wave, you need a bit of margin because if then that will get compressed through an MP3 or go streaming, it can distort if it's at zero dB here or even at what minus one, you've got to be minus 0 0.1. You've got to leave a little bit here. So when it does get compressed to an MP3 or something, it automatically goes to zero. And if it's already at zero, then it can distort. So let's slap this on, let's bring this up slowly. So, from zero, so. So I'm pushing this uh, as far as I can get it before it starts distorting. It's, it's quite, on this uh, adapted limiter, it seems to give us a lot of reduction, but I don't think it's giving us that much reduction, actually. Okay, now this is it. Uh, let's have a listen to the original. I think it's going to be better, but we might have got close to it. Let's have a look. So this is the original. You see, you can see here where it's hitting the bass in the top. So we can just try and push it a little bit more. Mine seems to be a little bit uh, clearer, a little bit sort of toppier. So let me bring down this a little bit here. So as you can see, I could fine tune this quite a lot, but it's kind of got a nice um, sound to it, or you know, already without kind of um, losing face to the other one. I mean, yeah, 
Yeah, there's a, there's a bit more bass on this. Um, see if I can push this a little bit here. A little bit here. Well, it's not bad if it really is, it, considering we're using only stock plugins here, and that has been done in a serious uh, mastering studio with a lot of good gear. And I will put the link in the description for you uh, to the Future Music uh, YouTube video of this, of the video that I got on a CD. And you'll see this guy uh, mastering this and uh, the gear that he's using. And now I won't say it's as good as his because he's got a nicer, rounder, sort of fatter bottom end to it if you want to get a good demo together you can do it in logic on these plugins and you know spend a bit more time on it you might even be able to get it better so there you have it i uh, hope you enjoyed this uh, video if you did like subscribe and i will see you soon and don't forget to leave some comments ciao